I own a lot of shoes. Casual shoes, dress shoes, sandals, hiking shoes, running shoes. They come from mail order, friends, and used shoe bins. I can be pretty cheap. Some shoes have endured hundreds of miles of running, while others have been through yogurt spills, dog poop, and of course, my nasty feet. But the shoes I have to really take care of and be careful about fitting properly are my climbing shoes. So I've been climbing for about four years now, and I've learned that the thing about climbing shoes is that you want them to be really snug, as your shoe should wrap around your foot like a glove, giving you the best feel for the rock. So these are my current climbing shoes. But when I first started climbing, I heard about professionals wearing climbing shoes that were up to two sizes smaller than what they usually wear. So I followed suit and bought a really small pair of black diamond momentums. However, after climbing for in them for a few times, I realized that I made a terrible mistake. I couldn't even wear them for more than five minutes at a time. They were unbearable to climb in. I thought, I already bought them. It's too late. I can't do anything now, so I'll just make the most out of the situation. But it didn't get better over time. Eventually, I had to accept that ditching them was the right thing to do, and that I wasn't ready to go down a full two sizes like the professionals. Even professionals and more experienced climbers sometimes go crazy and try and fit into insanely tight shoes to have them hug their feet tightly. But this can be harmful and can cause setbacks and injury. There's a balance between a tight shoe and, a, and good foot care. In our lives, we should always be looking for a good fit and figuring out what we can handle. Other than finding the right shoe, climbers look for certain shoes depending on the type of climbing. The first type of shoe I want to talk about is used for bouldering. So bouldering is a type of climbing that focuses on shorter routes and smaller rock faces. Think of it as sprinting compared to other types of climbing, which is more like running a marathon. Because they focus on highly intense climbing over short periods of time, painfully tight shoes with sometimes strange angular shapes are often the way to go because they give the best results. And it's worth it to sacrifice some comfort. Sometimes we're bouldering and need to wear cramped shoes. We need to buckle down for a test or a project or anything really challenging. Another type of shoe is used by traditional climbers or trad climbers. These guys focus on longer routes, often climbing multiple hours at a time, even full days with their shoes on. For this reason, they try to find shoes that maybe fit a little looser and are a little more comfortable as these guys are in it for the long run. Sometimes wearing looser shoes is better for us, this is like easing up on the work. It lets us take life slower, allowing us to enjoy it. We can stress less, find more time for our activities, and sleep more. Sometimes we wear bouldering shoes and go hard and put in the hours of work. Sometimes we wear trad shoes. We put more time into, into enjoying the process. We need to be smart about how we go about our lives. It's important to know what type of climbing we're doing and find the right shoe for the job. We must recognize that sometimes we need to switch our shoes depending on the activity. But this shouldn't be an excuse to go easy when we need to dig deep or to work needlessly hard for something. Understand what amount of work is truly needed. From my experience with my black diamond shoes, I learned that it's equally important to find the right shoe size. When I bought that pair, I tried to fit into a shoe that was way too tight. Sizes are different for each person. Although a tighter shoe might yield better performance, we need to know our limits and when a tighter shoe is actually hurting us. It's not too late to return a wrong size. The goal should to be as good as we can be, and we have to adjust to what that actually is, as we are all different. So having this mindset helps in a couple of ways. First of all, it allows us to use school or work and life in general for you adults in the crowd for what it's all about. Growth. So people forget this too often and are brought down by the work and forget that these places shouldn't be all about getting into perhaps the best college or trying to be what society considers successful. It should be about recognizing what kind of situation we're in, adjusting our work habits to it, while taking into account what we personally are capable of. Through this, we are able to work on ourselves, learn about our strengths and weaknesses, and find what we love. Second of all, it allows us to work more effectively. 
I find that I personally need a couple of hours on the weekends to be with family and friends or to properly time my breaks on weekdays and of course leave a lot of room for rest. By understanding my own needs, I'm able to work more efficiently. Working without breaks actually makes me go much slower and mixing it up definitely helps. So life isn't always about achieving and pushing because by doing so, we lose sight of some really important things like the idea of personal growth, but also family and friends. By finding a climbing chute that fits just right, we're given room to grow, to use our full potential for things that are most important to us, and to enjoy life. So some of you might think that it's a little funny that I'm discussing managing your workload and finding the best fit, because if you know me, I'm always working. My shoes are fairly tight because I have a rigorous load that takes a good amount of my time. I'm involved in cross country, track, Boy Scouts, hospital volunteering, leading my outdoors club, and being the commissioner of clubs. On top of that, I'm in four, I'm in four APs and also just finished applying to all of my colleges. 18 to be exact. Things can be painful and tight. I want to succeed and do my best not only in school, but in my extracurriculars as well. But I'm often wearing my bouldering shoes. The fit is too tight and I frequently push myself to the edge. I lose sleep and I don't get to talk to my friends and family as much. But because of my experience with wearing tight shoes, I feel like I have the authority to tell you, don't do it. <laughs> I should have recognized when I was wearing the wrong shoe for the job. I often wore my, shores, my shoes too tight and ignored sleep and socializing. I should have also gone a size larger to get a more comfortable fit. I should not have done so many activities in the first place and should have given myself more room at the expense of including everything I wanted to do or thought I needed to do. Now I'm trying to put this more into practice. I'm working on giving myself more space. I've had to do, for example, less weight room for cross country and track and have needed to put weekend volunteering on hold, both to catch up on schoolwork and sleep. I need to recognize when I should switch out of an uncomfortable high performance shoe and into a more comfortable and relaxed one so that I'm performing at my best and enjoying myself. We have to be smart because if our lives aren't in order, we can't perform at our highest ability, just as if we were to ruin our shoes with insanely, uh, ruin our feet with insanely tight shoes. So it's a balance. We know how far we can go. We know how tight we can fit the shoe and we want to do our best and be healthy while doing it, both mentally and physically. And once we find that best fit, we're put in the best position, position to succeed, to climb higher, to reach for our goals, all while caring for our feet. Thank you. <laughs>